Hi, I'm Christine. Welcome to Book Talk. Today we are discussing Lonnie Taylor's novel, Daughter of Smoke and Bone. The protagonist is a 16 year old girl who doesn't know where she comes from. She lives in the human world but she was raised by these creatures called Chimera. What? There's the angel world where the angels live and the Chimera world where the Chimeras live and they're constantly at war. Karu, the main girl, the orphan I was telling you about who doesn't know where she's from, she lives in the human world in Prague. It's a lot to take in at first. What is going on? It's a lot of world building. Chimera, half people, half animal people, what? That's what the Chimera are. They're like spliced up, half human, half Half antelope, half lion, half lizard, half snake, half lady. Once you get comfortable in that world, it is a fantastic story. And she does a nice job of weaving it in so by the time everything clicks in the story, oh, oh my god, that's what was, ah, oh, I really enjoyed it. There's romance, mystery, badassery, it's got all the things. All the things. It's nice and big. If you have yet to read Daughter of Smoke and Bones and you do not want to be spoiled, you should leave now. That's the end of the non spoiler section. I know I didn't give you much to go on because I don't like to spoil you. <sighs> okay, I did not, was not prepared for the weirdness coming. It's not even weird once you learn the story and stuff. It's not like gone where I'm like, this is weird no matter how you turn it. It starts off, she's like in high school. She's like going to school and she's like her boyfriend and she's just normal. I'm like, oh my God, why she have blue hair? That's so weird, blue hair. And then things just, that's not weird. That's not the weird thing that's happening here. But I like how she writes it, how we ease into it. It's like a mysterious thing. She hinted about having like a perfect accent and blah de blah. I was all, huh, is she an alien or something? But she, she wasn't. We got her friend Susanna, who I constantly just felt bad for because she's just getting to shit all the times. She described her weird sketchbook sketches and then she was like, little did they know, they're all real. But this just took a strange turn. I really like, okay, this wishing thing is really interesting. The scuppies even, I would just love having scuppies around my neck. Lucknow, Gravel, Garviel. I forget all their names already. The Razgut Fallen Angel. Ugh. I got really nervous when she wished for flight. Oh my god, what if this backfires and she can't come down and she flies off the earth? So the first time we enter the shop, that was a weird section too for me. I don't know about you. It's hard to picture. Brimstone I'm literally picturing as a giant toad with a tail. That errand she goes on, they get more teeth because they're running out of teeth and we have no idea why they're running out of teeth. When I found out what they use the teeth for, my, my, I, what? Not expecting that. What was your original theory? I thought maybe they were kind of wishes in that realm or teeth. If the teeth correspond to creating like a human body, what does whipping yourself correspond to? What kind of magic is that? I'm not exactly sure how the torturing people gets transformed into magic that you could use. You know what I'm saying? When she went into that basement and we saw Viega, I thought maybe if they get killed, they have to be laid to rest, maybe in there for a bit, and then they wake up again and they're all good to go. Apparently, you have to herd their soul out. Do they put them in jars like they did in the host. I'd like to see the process firsthand, and we never really got to see that. I guess if you're resurrected, you come with Hamza's. It was not expecting them to be a weapon. Akiva was gonna kill her, and she was like, Keela exploded into light, and it was all sooky with her light hands. So we meet Akiva. And Akiva at first were a little unsure about him, but then really soon, oh, it's a good angel. We've been trained as Karen, who's been trained to hate them. My favorite part of the whole book was when they were in that coffee shop, and Zizana came. She was all, I hate you, and then she saw him. Oh my god, must mate now. And it was that part. I made the connection. She is magical somehow. A few scenarios went through my mind, and I was hoping for the she is magical one. My other one was, oh my god, she is magicals and his daughter, and this is very, very creepy. I was pondering if it was a Buddhist, you're reborn, immortal thing. It was a she was purposely put into that body thing, and I liked that. I loved learning about magicals' backstory, how they met. It was told in a way where it went back and forth so nicely. Then we got this whole Thiago situation. It was the night of that ball, and she went all naked and sugared. Sugared? Really? Like, come as not what you are, because everyone is, you know, 
weird splice things. Oh, I'm Fiega, I'm a wolf, and I wear a wolf on my head. First of all, you're doing it wrong. If you are a wolf, you don't freaking wear a wolf on your head. That's like cannibalism. You couldn't figure that one out. Okay, let's talk about the end really quick. It ends, and she's all mad. I'm wondering why Akiba is all, oh my god, she's gonna hate me, because we go into the wishbone breaking thing, and it's all these wonderful memories. Like, oh, he must have been mistaken. He thought something else was in the wishbone. That's why he's like so scared. He's still scared when we come out of all the flashbacks. I'm still confused. I still thought that they just burned the portals, because that way, isn't that enough? So he can't get any more teeth, so the Chimera can't keep resurrecting themselves. But no, not enough. Had to kill them all without even asking, because he thought Magical was dead, but still. But then she decides to go with Raz Goot to the stupid thing in the sky to go to Angel World, Eretz. Why? I don't understand what that's going to accomplish, because if Broomstone and all your family was already killed, you're not going to find them. You're not going to find Akiva. And what are you going to find? Hopefully she doesn't go through or she comes right back or I don't know. Poor Zuzana, just left behind. No longer involved, you're too human. It was a very interesting thing to read. Thiago, he's gotta die. I bet Akiva kills him in the next one. What do you think's gonna happen in the next one? She's gonna forgive Akiva, obviously. Maybe she can still resurrect them. Maybe they're Maybe he didn't actually kill them. Maybe he thought he killed them. Brimstone's a sorcerer, and he could get out of that stuff, I think. Maybe, probably, maybe, probably, yes. I loved hearing about Brimstone and Madrigal's relationship. It was just so well-developed backwards. And Akiva has all these daddy issues and mommy issues. Couldn't help but shed some tears at the end. I cried when, oh, when Karu got all sliced up, and then she went down and followed them. I told her not to go in that other door. Why would you go again? what he said all these years there's a reason the fact that he just chucked her out like nothing when she was so wounded tears then their little bar with the gas masks and the coffins very cool and then there's the whole wings thing and it kind of foreshadows that she used to have wings it's just all a very tied together and interesting. I can't wait to see more. It was toward the end that I was getting really into it, you know? I finally was comfortable with all the names and the places and stuff, because it takes a little bit for it to sink in. And then, and then it was over. You know what the good news is? The second one comes out in fall of 2012. Yeah, let me know your thoughts, and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. I'm Christine. Bye! I did, I really loved hearing from Madrigal's point of view. So close.